Hey everyone, welcome to Nerds Talk. I'm Mike. And I'm Chris. And today we are doing another review of the next episode of The Mandalorian Season 2. That is episode 4, chapter 12, The Siege. Now, another great episode. Uh, again, for yeah. those who are new, we are not going to go into spoilers yet. We will give a quick overview of what we thought of the episode. Uh, and for those who are new to our channel as a whole, uh, here at Nurse Talk, we like to create a community that is uh, family friendly. We like to, to include everyone. And with that being said, if you'd like to support us, please click the subscribe button, um, drop a comment below, and uh, definitely thumbs up on the video. So with that, let's kind of move forward. Chris, Chapter 12, The Siege, what did you think of this new episode? Yeah, at the beginning when uh, he's like, oh, I'm, we're not going to, you know, make it. I, I thought it might be a filler, but uh, it was, you know, quite jam-packed, lots of action, some tidbits thrown in there as well. So I, I really enjoyed it. And uh, I went in thinking, oh, okay, this might be like a little bit of you know, before we see anyone that was announced the episode before. But uh, very excited and, and lots of speculation that can be made uh, going forward now. So I yeah. enjoyed it, though. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, definitely action packed. Uh, I loved, you know, kind of where we ended up in this episode, what we got to see, filling in some some backstory, kind of uh, connecting some of the tissue. I mean, this is this is the halfway mark, right, in this season. It's episode four. We only got four episodes left, so they kind of got to get the ball going, and we get to see some some people, and we get to to to, to learn about some stuff uh from season one fill in some gaps and kind of kind of get the plot going so really, really excited for this episode uh again lots of easter eggs thrown in we'll, we'll call those out as we go but overall yeah another great episode uh, i watched it twice and uh yeah i just i didn't feel bored at all <laughs> during any moment of it yeah yeah i agree all right so i mean that's it we're going to jump into this fuller filled section now of this episode if you haven't watched it yet please pause stop watch the video then come back and you know join us for their our kind of deep dive into the siege all right so we open up with mandalorian as uh, it's talking to the child about plugging in uh some wires so this i thought was absolutely hilarious um a yeah. great uh you know comic relief uh more letting the child shine giving the personality very funny um and yeah he's telling him you know putting the red wire into the blue slot and tells him not to let them touch uh yeah yeah, I just thought it was it was absolutely hilarious. Um, um before I continue, I mean, what what do you think? <laughs> yeah, I thought it was great to see that uh, the child is starting to understand. Like we're seeing that he's understanding more. We're hearing more, you know, vocal noises from him, even though they're baby noises. He's kind of, yeah. you know, growing as as I think the first season he barely made any any very few sounds, but this this season they're really pumping up the sounds and and trying to evolve him. I wouldn't be surprised if he's making, you know, more sounds going forward or maybe um, we get used to some sort of communication where we understand that certain sounds mean certain things. Mm. Um, or at least the Mandalorian will be able to translate it for us like R2-D2 does or uh, C-3PO does for R2-D2, things mm. like that. Um, but uh, I thought it was very comical, a good way to opening it up. Um, you know, kind of reminds me of like other movies where, you know, there's that back and forth. Of, no, don't do that. Yeah the misunderstanding and stuff yeah. but uh it is it, it was really good i thought yeah. it was well done and and shows them communicating working together so he's not just looking after the child now he's more teaming up and, and building the partnership kind of thing where he's giving him duties and stuff to do absolutely so uh after multiple attempts of trying to explain what a blue wire was and what a red wire was and where to put them the child accidentally touches them and gets shocked which is very very hilarious uh so then we kind of cut to the next scene where they're eating, I guess, some sort of soup, um, and he kind of has to lift his his helmet to to, to drink it. And the child kind of yeah. tries to peek inside, try to see his face. I thought that was again another great moment. And then um, uh, he makes a comment or something, and then he continues to drink, and the child just eats the soup. And life is is as they knew it. But I thought again, it was a cute little like even us, you know, back in the first season, we we're like, oh, who is it? Who is it? And the child's like trying to peek, who is it? Because even though he's with him, he doesn't remove his helmet. He's still never, that that never person. seen him. Yeah, so that's he's cool. still a, a, a human being, I guess. And IG-11 wasn't because he's a robot, but yeah, yeah, you know, the child still is. That's right. Creature. That's right. Uh, excuse me. So they decide to head back to Navarro. As you mentioned, uh, you know, they're not going to be able to make it all the way. And they want to go meet up with some old friends and see if they can figure out, get the ship repaired and whatnot. So I thought that was great as well, right? Because now we're, we're, we're building back that, you know, everything that happened in season one, the partnerships, all that all that stuff 
is kind of being brought back to season two, which which was a great way of, of, of doing it. You know, they're not going to quite make it, but yeah. now that gives them a reason to go visit uh, those people again. Absolutely. So we kind of cut to a scene where we see uh, the same species as Panda Baba from the uh, episode four. Him and Dr. Avizan were in there who are kind of uh, picking on Luke and then Obi-Wan cuts off um his hand, Baba's yeah. hand right so they, these are aqualish aliens um so basically the three of them are in there uh clearly brutes uh thieves thugs whatever you want to call them and they are torturing this little squirrel like creature like they're gonna kill it i guess and eat it potentially yeah and uh, and this is where the armor used to be yes that's right and, and and so that uh that symbol that they have uh was gone so it's just like a uh i guess a shadow or whatever like a dust thing of, of where it used to be so we're not sure if the armor took it or you know yeah and that's where thing, they right? went off to the, and stuff like that the armor had things to do didn't want to leave but obviously has left she's not there and we based on her taking out four or five stormtroopers by herself figured that she definitely got it out very alive. well yeah so it's interesting to find out what's going to happen with that character but uh yeah so Cara Dune breaks in destroys all three um and save save the squirrel like species from getting killed uh, you know, she kind of throws it a little bit of food and kind of carries on. Uh, then we kind of cut over. Amanda arrives and meets Grief and Car- uh, Cara Dune. Um, there you I'm, I'm going to jump in real yeah. quick. Yeah. So this is where we first are told that it's the warden. So we find out that Correct. Cara Dune is now the warden, which I or thought was kind of Mar- cool. Is She's, it Marshall? The, oh, or the Marshall. The Marshall, yeah. The Marshall, you're right. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, so... Uh, as they're, after yeah. they meet and you know uh Greek grabs the child and they're like talking and it's all like you know yeah, he's very friendly like who is he taking good care of you like and, and mando's looking at Cara doing like who is this guy like he used to try and be the head of all the bounty hunters and, and yeah. you know low life kind of scoundrel kind of thing and now he's like this cuddly dad type uh character yep and they kind of, kind of funny explain like things have changed they've kind of restored the planet to kind of where they want it to be um he looks at his ship and sees that's you know worse for wear and so Mando asks him if his credit is still good here and so he orders a, an alien species to uh to repair his ship so as they kind of waltz into town the camera pans back on this alien creature who kind of looks at them turns around and looks at them um which is very suspicious and then we kind of see them yeah. walking down the, the the road and we see like everyone's kind of cheerful and happy and kind of going about yeah, life the markets are open and like very busy and, and like normal life type stuff uh, compared That's right. to what it was season one right like, yeah and so then they kind of waltz and they make their way into what turns out to be a school where they have a protocol droid uh very similar to c3po a female protocol droid uh you know teaching a, a group of kids and so they talk yeah. about, you know, having a, a school here and like raising kids and kind of, again, life kind of being uh, back to normal and kind of better than where they were. And um, everything's kind of going great. So they're there. And so that used to be the bar. Yes. That used to be the bar where they met up and that shootout happened and everything. That's right. So it was quite interesting to see that they turned that cantina into a school. That's, that's awesome. Young ones, which yeah. is amazing. Um, so they all get there. Uh Grief, uh, excuse me, Kara talked to uh, Din Djarin about a, like a mission. And so they, they basically, Grief kind of puts uh, the child in, into the chair. And uh, and Mano's like, oh, he goes wherever I go. And he says, where we're going, you don't want to bring the child. You don't it's, want, yeah. it's too dangerous, yeah. whatever. It's not somewhere he should be. He's going to be safe here. It's a school, whatever. We're good. So they all they all take off. And so then we get to see all the kids that are whispering and like talking to each other and, you know, look at the, the new kid in town and all that kind of stuff. And it's, it's great. Yeah. And then we kind of see the child who's sitting in this little chair. He's very, very small, kind of looks over to the child sitting next to him who is eating some sort of blue cookies, kind of look like macaroons. Mac- yeah, they look like macaroons. Yeah. So he's eating these cookies and the child motions to him and asks for a <laughs> cookie, which, again, is adorable. And the kid just kind of looks at him. And I'm like, how could you not fall apart for this kid? But I mean, kids are kids, right? Kids are kids, so, right? They don't care how he looks at this, kid this guy. Almost. Yeah, and he sees the, the baby Abby asking for the cookie, and he's pretty much like, no, like, get out of yeah. here. And so Yabby yeah, kind of is like, aw, like, kind of gets a little upset, and then kind of looks over and sees the bag of cookies there. So the, the, the camera's focusing on the kid. You kind of see very blurry. You see the child kind of stretches his arm, the cookies start to move, and and then the kid kind of like, look, I don't know, laughs at something, looks back, and the cookies are gone. And he looks over, and baby Abby's sitting there with a cookie in his ha- hand. He just kind of looks at him, smiling like, ah, oh, well, I gave you a shot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're lost. Uh, uh, now I now I have them. I'm not going to give any to you now. That's it. And it was hilarious. It's just like, he doesn't yeah. speak, but he's like, he's got his own personality. Don't mess with him. You know, you wouldn't see a Jedi doing something like that. But, you know, he's been raised by Mando. And Mando's, you know, he gets what he wants. He does what he needs to do. And while he does have a good moral compass, you know, he 
can sometimes skirt a potential gray line depending on how he deals with certain people and uh child's been picking that up and uh, i thought that was pretty funny that he just i want this and i'm taking it yeah so awesome just a couple of great scenes another little exactly a little comedy bits here and there because he can't really have much dialogue so they might as well make him turn into more of a you know that that funny type character that were yeah. breaks things up absolutely so then they meet the very first bounty we see in the first episode the mithril uh he's working off his debt uh for approximately 365 yeah. years uh with grief carga so okay. um he complains about you know being in in, uh, in carbonite and him uh, still not being able to see properly out of his left eye i think it was and and uh and, and he tells grief oh if he ever runs off let me know and i'll, I'll go around him up and so you know kind of keep him in line yeah. Um, but it's kind of a, a callback to an Easter egg to Han saying, I'm blind when he comes mm-hmm. out of Carbonite. So, that's right. yeah, so they're, they're still using that blindness because it's what, six years, uh, three years after episode six? Oh, this is five years. This is five, five years, years after. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So it's uh, still like Carbonite is still new ish because, you know, it was, it was new when they're using it for Han. Yeah. I mean, clearly so, they mastered so. it for him to have that many guys carbonated in the ship, right? But yeah, mm-hmm. um, okay. So we find out that there's an old empire base back on the uh, base on the far side of Navarro. They show like here's the area that we live in, the part we've kind of restored and whatever, and here's this base that's been hidden um, yeah. on the far side. And so Grief and Kara ask Mando for his help to take down that base, so the empire is completely wiped off the face of the planet. They want to kind of get back to peace, and they don't feel that they can do that with this base that's lingering there. And we realize that that's where. Moff Gideon got a bunch of the troops where they all showed up. That's right. From That's this, where this they base. all came. Yeah. So, uh, so they agree. Okay, we're gonna go off and, and do this mission. Uh, so they have a have to sneak in and overload a reactor. Grief threatens the Mithril to take them all the way in, or he'll leave him in some sort of lava area of the planet. So the Mithril is very cowardly, always trying to like get out of what he needs to do. And, and Grief is like, you know, you're under a uh, you owe X amount of years of service. You know, I freed you from the Carbonite. This is you know your debt. And then even offers to like reduce his sentence by like a hundred years if That's right. you know he does certain things, right? So, um, uh, yeah. So the Cowardly Mithril keeps trying to hang back, but they keep scaring him uh, to join them. Uh, basically, they get to to the base. There's a, a fused uh, door, uh, the, I guess, from the lava and stuff. It's kind of melted, so they call him out to kind of bring some tools to help because he didn't want to stay around. Um, and then uh, Mando kind of looks up and says, "I'll be back," and jet packs up to the top of the roof. And so yeah. while he's there trying to open it up and they're making comments about the tool he's using, and he's like, oh, this is really just meant for some light plumbing. You're for like, hey, plumbing, you're right. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they make some jokes and then a stormtrooper falls all the way down. And so they kind of look up like, what the heck happened? And then the door is open and they hop into the elevator and, and they all catch up with, with Mando. And as they get to the top, they see like five or six different dead stormtroopers. And so he said, oh, it's, it's abandoned. Is it grief? Like, I thought you said this was an abandoned base. And there's clearly a lot yeah. of people here. So... Um, we kind of cut to uh, a scene with an officer on a bridge, and uh, oh, before that, uh, the camera system. Uh, oh yes. yeah, he sees the uh, the black market. Yes, uh, high value. <laughs> yeah, this transport ship or whatever. And so the mithril makes like, oh, yeah. we gotta get that. It's worth a lot of money. He's like, it's all gonna burn up along with this base. Like, don't worry about it. And so yeah. they they kind of bring him along. Um, they get to the to the bridge. Uh, officer is looking at the cameras. You know, one camera is out. He's calling out, trying to figure out what's going on. He gets taken out by the crew um and they shut off all the communications and whatnot they ask the mithril to drain the coolant lines as they kind of slowly make their way to the area that is gonna the plan is to overheat this base because it's over this big volcano yeah 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 yeah. and so if they turn off the coolant lines it'll overheat call the cause the whole base to explode yada 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 so yeah. Uh, very, very similar to the Obi Wan kind of getting over this whole gravity thing. Similar interface, the draining of the stuff. His was a tractor beam, and this is draining coolant. But very similar. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was a cool like callback to that whole thing. You know, looking down over the edge, and then kind of walking out over this this round. I love, I love the comment he makes though. There's no guardrail. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was a joke. A lot of memes that go around. There's yes. never safety, like worker safety going on there. Absolutely. Uh, so I, I love that he does that and then does like a little step to test it out uh, to see how sturdy it is. So yes. he was pretty funny there. That was great. He claims that he's afraid of heat and heights and lava. Uh, Grief yeah. threatens to put him back in the carbonite. So he gets over there and does his thing and um, they uh, come up, they come upon a couple of engineers as they kind of empty out the coolant and kind of make their way out they said they t- they say how, t- how much time we have roughly 10 minutes 
So they're kind of r running through and they come upon a couple of engineers. One of them, you know, starts shooting them and says, destroy it. And so the other one starts shooting the panel, it just starts breaking and shooting the computer controls and whatnot. And so they yeah. go and they take them out and uh, they're trying to figure out what's going on. And then they turn and they see this alien like creature thing floating in what I'm, I put in question marks back to fluid. It's, it's blue fluid. We're not 100% sure. Um, we found out that the plan was to harvest blood from the child for a transfusion into someone. So that's right. I'll stop here. So the assumption here, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, it's very hard to see what is in the tank. We assume it's a person. It's a body. We can't make out a face. I thought of Snoke. You yourself thought it was the I, same. I as well. Yeah. Yeah. I also thought that. So um, especially because Snoke was a clone. Uh, yes. The markings on uh, on those scientists or, or you know uh, whoever they were also had the same, and they were the markings of I believe what the clones had on Camino. I think is the yeah. they planet where they were created. That's right. Um, so it's very, and if Snoke we saw later in Rise of Skywalker was many yeah. different clones that eventually became you know the one that had the Force and all that stuff. So maybe this is going to explain the backstory because we got no story about Snoke at all. But in here's all the, the thing: movies. could this have been the Emperor, the stages of the Emperor? Because remember, he was oh, strapped that, to that, that big machine. Could this first blood transfusion to try to keep him going, and then from him make the future clones? I just yeah, thought of that right very now. Possible. Right? Because then why would they need the blood transfusion if the Emperor is kind of like the puppet master of all these Snokes and all this other stuff? Well, maybe he was so weak that in order to kind of get him going, they wanted this surge of strong force blood or whatever to kind of kickstart him and kind of keep him going. I don't know if that's the truth. Again, yeah. you can't really tell. It's some thing in, in the glass. Now, I assume that it's obviously not the Emperor because we're going to get to the fact they blow up the whole base. So clearly it can be him, right? So I agree yeah. with you. It's a clone. But I'm sure this is probably one base of many, maybe many exactly that. They're just, you know, doing these different tests to see who can become. So we see a, a message come up uh, that, you know, of the original um, scientist that took the blood of the, the child and everything yes. and explaining you can only take so much without killing the donor. Mm -hmm. um, you know, these are, they've run, they've depleted all the things, but all of them have been failures so far. All the, all the volunteers have been failures so far. Yes. Um, so Which makes you wonder you know how that, many more volunteers have there been? Exactly. Are these Jedi's they've many, been hunting like, down? Yeah. I mean, I guess. Like Stormtroopers guess. that are volunteering or are they just randoms that are, they're, you know, kind of volunteering or are they clones that they're creating? Or, you know, what could it be? There's lots of options and things, but I assume this is just one base of many that they're trying to, you know, see who can become the first to succeed kind of thing. So, but it's very interesting to see this turn in the Mandalorian, which will give us some sort of background, I assume, on, you know, either people that were in the movies or, you know, that we meet later on in, in the uh, saga. Uh, so I'm, I'm very intrigued that they, they're taken this way where they're kind of, or at least... We're speculating, but they have the possibility of giving us some um, back history on, on some characters if they so choose. If that's the way that they're going, then we can find out about, you know, there's a lot of gaps, let's be honest, from the, the third trilogy um, on, on some background of some characters and stuff like that yes. that they didn't really fill in on. So this could be their opportunity to do that and, and give everyone the answers that a lot we're asking for. Absolutely. Absolutely. So there's a lot of stuff that can kind of go into here. They can create a whole new character, an experiment that goes wrong. Clearly exactly. And, and, we could be like totally wrong and like something totally different. They could be like super uh, death, like Jedi troopers or something like that, that, you yeah. know, they're trying to give the, the force to these new stormtrooper types. So it, it could be that even because later on we see a bunch of things later that will yes. explain um, that, that maybe it's part of that or something or or maybe they succeeded or whatever maybe but there's lots of options which is nice correct and then and then whatever they if it is a new thing they could pretty much at the end of the show kill it off so that it doesn't affect what kind of comes after it so i mean there's a lot of options exactly. but it's very interesting exactly. to see them kind of touch base and again try to connect things and try to open up and make things make more sense i love it when they do that um so i'm excited to kind of see where they go with that um yeah. the mithril kind of goes on and discovers like a, a video log like you said of the scientist speaking and then we find out that he's speaking to, the message is for moff gideon and that's so right. man was like oh that's clearly an old old message moff's dead he's like no this was like three days ago yeah and so they're like oh so if he's alive and then he puts two and two together he's like he's gonna go out after the child 
So he basically has to take off and says, I've got to go save him. And they're like, okay, you jet back out of here. You'll get there, get there faster and we'll meet up with you. So he takes off and the other three basically have to fight their way out through the hallways of stormtroopers, right? Because this base yeah. is still active. And so they're kind of making their way through. Uh, Mando kind of uh, cuts through to, to them, fighting through some stormtroopers. And then uh, Mando uh, running down the hallway and then basically gets get, ends up in that same room with a coolant. And That's right. basically jetpacks out of there to the roof. And then a couple of stormtroopers are shooting at him. And then one realizes, oh, like the cooling thing's off. Let's go try to turn it back on and try to stop this thing from, from exploding. Uh, so he takes off and, uh, you know, he shoots shoots his way out. Basically, he's he's gone. Um, uh, where the rest get pinned down in the main hangar area. Um, and Kara basically hijacks that transport that uh, the Mithril was talking about uh, to try yeah. to get them away. Um so she, uh, they get in, and so they're kind of gunning it towards this this door, which I didn't think it was going to fit, which is funny, the little hallways. But she's gunning it to, I guess, try to fit this big thing through the hallways. But she guns towards it. The door closes, and so she stops just, just shy of, like, smashing into the door. And so um, she uh, basically has to back up and spin, spin around, and stormtroopers are shooting at them. And she just basically just goes full bore at these stormtroopers. Now, this is a transport that is meant to barely you know hover off the ground it's not a flying ship of any kind and right. so she basically heads straight for the stormtroopers and creams right over the edge and falls straight down and lands right on the speeder of the mithril who is very <laughs> attached to it because he makes it makes a comment about not wanting to speed speeder. Yeah. yeah and then later he's like oh is that my speeder like oh you cracked my speeder so very very funny um they're making it out and then boom we see like what is it four yeah Four, Maybe it was six. Yeah, um, a bunch of, of three, bikes. three made it through and two crashed. So that's there's right. five. You just just got it. I, I love seeing two hit together on the yes. rocks, and that's two gone right away. But it was great, and they're just like going right down, and they're flying down the, the hill, and it's like again, call back to Return of the Jedi, where we get to see these things like busting out and going through the trees. Yeah, they're exactly. they're amazing to see them just go through, and they, they look so so good too like the graphics oh so it was good. great I'm coming down and stuff yeah so they're flying down after them so you know she tells grief to hop on the gun so he gets in the back and again very similar gun uh not as bad as the wing falcon where it's completely swiveling around but you know you got a screen you're aiming and you're, the whole chair kind of moves and you're shooting and and so he's out there trying to take out these these uh speeder bikes um he manages to take one out and the other two just kind of like make a communication and just speed right by the speeder so the guns can't hit them. And so they're on either side. Um, one pulls up and starts shooting at Kara from the side, while the other one climbs aboard the top of the transport. The side, yeah. And of course, Grief's like, I lost them. I can't see them because, you know, he's facing the back. And so um, uh, Kara basically uh, squeezes uh, the, uh, the, the trooper on the right and just smashes him into the rock. So yeah. they're, they're basically in the, right down there in the middle of like this ravine, this huge canyon um between these these tall mountain rocks so it's a very very narrow passageway and so the biker obviously couldn't get out so we have one guy on the roof he pulls out his detonator he's about to to i guess blast them to bits and grief basically turns around in the gun and sees him on the roof and the guy realizes that i guess he hears the gun turn around he looks around sees the gun and gets blasted and that was, that was right. awesome i loved it yeah. i thought he was going to turn around and knock him off with the the end of the gun which would have made uh, sense too yeah yeah but I guess it wasn't as long, so no. he, it was just as good. Like, it was probably better the way that they did it. But in my head, I'm like, oh, he's going to turn around to see and then knock him off by I think accident. a shot like that, especially with the detonator active, would cause the detonator to go off too, right? But that yeah, that's what it was. Um, and then some TIE Fighters launch. And these are the, those new TIE Fighters, the ones that fold up and, and, and launch right. from the so base cool. right before it explodes. There's four of them. They chase, uh, again, the, the, the transport, like I said, into this ravine. And so they don't have really a lot of maneuverability. And so Kara's just going as fast as she can, trying to, to, to dodge shots while she's kind of yelling at grief, like, hey, like, what's going on back there? And he's like, oh, yeah. would you like to, to try you it? You want to come back here? Yeah. Yeah, be my guest. <laughs> so he's trying to go. He finally lines up a shot. He blows a one tie fighter apart, but the parts come crashing down and ends up hitting his gun. So destroys his gun. So he runs to the front and he's like, let's go, 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 go. They're going as fast as they can. The TIE Fighters are, are, are basically closing in and one has a perfectly clean shot. He's about to pull the trigger. And what happens is uh, we get some bullets it explodes. And, and it explodes. And out of the nowhere, the Razor Crest comes flying in. Mando's here to save the day. The other two TIE Fighters scatter. And so yeah. the the, the um, transport makes it back to uh, the, main, the main city of, in Navarro. 
and they kind of stop and kind of like get out to kind of see what's going on. And Razor Crest is kind of uh, taken off. He starts uh, chasing uh, one guy, takes him out uh, up in the air, uh, and then he basically like I guess pulls like a three sixty. Yeah, yeah, shuts kinda... off, nose dives down. The whole time the child is in there cheering and excited as he goes to the tight fighter. Like, yeah, like he's like he's on the roller, roller coaster. coaster right? And then as they're going down, yeah, his hands are up in the air. They're spinning completely trying to dodge because the tie fighter's coming right at them, trying to shoot them. And so they're yeah, coming and they're spinning the whole way. Corkscrewing all the way down. That's right. And uh, he takes out the, the last tie fighter. And then of course they they kind of stop midair uh, or kind of like level out. And the child he kind of looks at the child and the child's looking down and then just pukes <laughs> all, all the that. blue cookies, man, yeah. all over the place. So I thought, again, another funny moment for the child, child cheering to, like, he's throwing up and it's just, just a fun, fun... Too much movie. excitement, too much food. That's it. Um, yeah, so I thought it was hilarious. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so uh, they cut a radio to him and are all excited and, and asked him to, like, come join them or whatever, uh, have a drink or something, I can't remember. Yeah, right? can I at least buy you a drink? Yeah, and he says, he tells Grieving Car that he has to leave right away before Gideon catches on to what happened here. Uh, and he's got his own little mess to clean up. <laughs> he mentions a little uh, thing there. Um, yeah. So yeah, I love that he's using his cape to to clean. Yeah. Uh, Yabby's <laughs> mouth and and body and stuff. So we we uh, so he basically takes off. They cut back to the town where we see two X wings parked. Um, and uh, I guess we assume these are the pilots that were there that saved Mando on the ice planet, and who yeah. you know a couple of them who blew up the base back in, in the first season. Um, uh, one of the the pilots, the, the Canadian one that you were talking about, right? The Canadian actor. That's right. Yeah, he comes and out. He's from Kim's Convenience, I believe, and then he's also part of the Five Hundred First uh, uh, Club. Perfect. So he comes yeah. out. So he is questioning Grief Karga about the events that happened and like the Tie Fighters and all this kind of stuff. And um, and he asked, uh, you know, where the where the Razor Crest went to. And Grief says, I didn't say anything about a Razor Crest. He says, Well, your yeah. transaction logs say this is not. You can't trust that stuff. This is not yeah. like curse on or whatever. This is like exactly. Yeah, this is droids can't tell the difference. That droid can barely exactly pre Empire to whatever. They they can't tell the difference. So the pilot kind of leaves um, a little disheartened, heartened about you know knowing that this you know they're not really like giving up everything. But he did say like, oh, if I get any news, I'll definitely be in touch, but not. So he kind of walks out, passes by Kara, who's feeding that squirrel creature that she saved, and he kind of speaks to her and obviously knows who she is and talks about you know Cara Dune and she was a soldier, great soldier, and mentions, oh yeah, you're from uh, Alderaan, right? And uh, and uh, he says, like, you know, he says I, that she's done a really good job yes. cleaning up the thing. They could use a person like her with the background, the military background, stuff like that. Correct. And yeah. um, and so he asks about like Alderaan and says like, you know, he defended Alderaan or whatever. And he's like, he did you lose anyone? Yeah, he served. Yeah. And she's like, did you lose anyone? She's like, I lost everyone. Like my whole planet exploded. Right. And I so, thought that was a great conversation. Between oh the yeah, two of them too. brings like, it, it back. So good. Absolutely. And so he talks about obviously like joining and whatnot. And uh, she's like, I'm not a joiner. And he leaves a little re rebel medallion. It wasn't resistance. It's not definitely not resistance yet. It's a rebel medallion. He puts yeah. it down there. Uh, I don't know if it's kind of like a, a purple heart kind of thing. That idea of like, you know, you're a great soldier and, you know, obviously trying to coax her back, but kind of leaves her that little token. And so she kind of looks at it. And uh, I don't know if she kind of like thinks about it, but she she definitely like, She's definitely thinking something, right? At this point in time, he walks away. Um, uh, so, yeah, so she's there. He takes off. Then we cut to a huge Imperial cruiser that's coming yes. across the galaxy. And a female officer who looks very familiar. And I can't put my finger on it where I've seen this girl's face before, but she looks very, very familiar. Yeah. I'll have to Google that up there. She reminded me of uh, Battlefront 2, um, Urso. Was it Urso? I didn't. You think so? I don't, I don't I, think that yeah. was uh, well, just at the beginning. Yeah, just at the beginning, I was like, "Oh, is that?" And I was like, "Ah, the timeline, I don't think really works out." But yeah, yeah something so I'm about not her. Sure who she is? I got a little Kira vibe. It wasn't obviously her. It's not the actress, but I mean, I just something about her eyes and her face. She just, I, I kept. I'm like, is this supposed to be like Kira? Is this supposed to? Be? I don't know. Something about her just made me think of other characters, and I can't don't know why. But yeah, you know, same here though. This officer's there. She's speaking to someone on a transmission. We see it's the alien that fixed up the ship, Mano's ship. That's right. And so and he basically... Back, uh, yeah. Yeah. All okay. suspicious. Yeah. That's right. And so he basically says, um, he confirms that, um, that you know, there's been something that's been planted in the Razor Crest. 
Um, it's been successful at not. Uh, she says he'll be well rewarded in the new era. Then she takes off down a hallway, but blah, 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 opens a door, and sure enough, Moff Gideon's there, and she reports to him. Um, she um, uh, tells him that, you know, the uh, the track has been planted, whatnot, we're good to go, and so he asks if uh, he, referring to Mando, still has the asset. And when she confirms, he says, good, then we will be ready. Then we will be ready. And the camera pans out on out uh, out off of him, and you can see this huge room completely lined he's inspecting this what i would call like a large hallway of death troopers is what it looks like but yeah. I mean, what's what's your thought were they death troopers or do you think there was a new type of trooper it looked like death troopers to me but i could be wrong they did they did look, look like death troopers but uh if they were working on something maybe it could be like a jedi trooper or something like that but all in all they, they were all black they had the marking similar to a death trooper so from from the you know from the pan out it did at my first um idea with death trooper and he did have a lot at the end of that last season right and they came where they come from clearly this base and you know we only saw like four or five of them in rogue one and we didn't really see much of them since and then they show up here and they're like delete elite of troopers and they like never miss a mark and so you know they got destroyed in that battle now there's a hallway of them so clearly it's not just i mean i guess the death troopers could be clones of their best troopers which is why they are so deadly instead of having training certain people to be the best um, they could yeah. have a couple of really prime candidates and then they clone them out. That could be the possibility of what we're seeing here. Well, yeah. I guess we'll have to wait and see how, you know, how we get to know a little bit more about the Death Troopers and where they are. But really, really cool overall. We got to see Moff Gideon, the, connecti- the connective tissue. We know that, okay, the f- half of the season's done. Moff Gideon is now has a tracker on Mando and the child. He's going after them. He's got this That's huge right. battalion of Death Troopers potentially. We know that they want the child's blood for some experiment, for some sort of creature clone, whatever the case is. Uh, obviously something to do with the force we assume it's connected to snow but we don't know um so there's some preemptive danger there uh you know obviously mando's ca- caught up with kara and grief and so clearly they're going to be back in some capacity we know that boba yeah. fett's been kind of left and saw the man go off with his armor we know that he's off to go find ahsoka is moff getting gonna land and ahsoka's gonna have to battle him with a dark saber lightsaber oh, battle gonna be like yeah it's like... exciting it's exciting at the possibility so again um I'm really like, if this was like your your winter your mid season break type episode, it definitely keeps you wanting more. Oh, and for sure. What's the better time to do that? And right in the middle of the season, like, okay, after this, we're gonna hit the ground going, and it's gonna be like, okay, next planet, the characters we want to see, uh, more conflict. Uh, maybe the child gets taken in the next episode. They're gonna go get him back, and it's just gonna keep going and going and going right to that last episode, and then hopefully. Maybe they'll end it with Boba Fett showing up to the cliffhanger for season three. Maybe it'll be other characters that kind of branch off. Yeah. But however they decide to bring it together, I am so excited. Um, I love what they're doing. And yeah, I can't wait for more. Same here. I, I totally agree 100% with everything you said. They've left so many uh, openings and ways that they could go, and not just this season, but in future seasons. So they're really dropping a lot of breadcrumbs for for people and and leaving some cliffhangers and, and getting people very excited for what may come, what what surprises they may introduce or, or things like that. So so exciting! Uh, looking forward to the next episode. I wish I could binge watch it all. I just want more and more every time I watch it. But uh, it's nice to have that break and, and look forward to something the next week. But uh, definitely been keeping my interest, and I think season two is just flying by, and it's been so great so far. Absolutely, absolutely, and I really, really hope that they are right now starting season three, and not like I hope they're not skipping a beat with like COVID and stuff. I hope that they're kind of getting things moving because I don't want to wait more than another year for the next season. But uh, yeah, yeah, I mean overall, I mean there are our thoughts. We both really enjoyed the episode. I definitely must watch. Um, yeah. Despite it being what some may call a filler episode, I you know it had so much plot development that I think that this was a must yeah. watch episode, um, and there was a reason for him going back. And again, they kind of kind of made it go forward, kind of filled in why do they want the child, what they were doing with him. It clearly, it's the blood that they want. They're doing some experiments. It just makes more sense of like the whole plot and like yeah. the whole next steps of the the fallen empire for Plan B or Plan C. You know what I mean? Like there clearly is this overall um strategy and it's not just random people trying to take control there is this method to the madness of you know the emperor dying he clearly had more plans in place this inevitability and it kind of i guess they're trying to add more credibility to like rise of skywalker with him being like you know i saw everything and i I was controlling all the sith and i knew everything that was going on whatever and it kind of makes it more logical with him like oh yeah like 
there was a chance that I may have fallen by Darth Vader, like I foresaw that or whatever, but this is my plan B and plan C, and I had clones and all this other... Who knows? We'll see how, kind of how much they dive into that. Or, like I said, if they decide to make a complete left turn, say, we forget what happens in the prequels, this is what we're doing with this blood, and this is kind of where we're going, so... Yeah, you know. and I, I, I wouldn't consider this a filler episode. No. I think this was needed and, and like, part of the storyline and, and, you know, a good episode uh, to watch, and, and it will... It pieces a lot of things together yes, and it also does. opens up a lot of doors. So definitely not a filler episode no. and very entertaining. Yep, absolutely. Much more to watch. I mean, if anything, the yeah. the plant the uh, the passenger episode would be more considered more of a, a filler with the whole like getting stuck in ice cave and all that kind of stuff. Like it didn't really yeah, do I anything. Agree. They just got stuck and yeah. had to get going. But uh, you know, we got to see some character development of Mando and the child and like him taking care and, and you know, some funny moments of the child kind of growing up, you know, eating and being like more mischievous and stuff like that. But I mean, it wasn't like make or break to introduce more of the X-Wing pilots. They're kind of following yeah. him around now, but it wasn't, it wasn't like if you missed that, that episode and kind of picked up continuing going forward, I don't think you would have really missed much, but this is an episode no. you definitely don't want to miss. Definitely. I agree a hundred percent. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, I mean, there you go, folks. That's that's our review and our, our recap of the episode. We loved it a lot. Uh, but let us know what do you think. Uh, drop a comment below, like the video, subscribe to our channel. We'd love to hear from you. And as always, friends, stay nerdy. Stay nerdy. nerdy.